Welcome to the new episode of Lunch with Experts. It is said that work so hard that your name itself becomes your resume. Today we have that person who needs no introduction, the legend himself, Dr. Stephen Cohen. Welcome to our show and we'll be talking about endodontics, taking his opinion about endodontics and we have some Lenten donuts or idli to bring back his fond memories of India. Thank you so much, Doctor. Namaste to all my friends and colleagues and to my friends here this morning. So we'll get it started then with my first question. So what is your opinion regarding ongoing debate on a minimally in invasive endodontics? I'm not even sure why it should be a debate because if we just look at the literature in terms of minimally invasive endodontics, there are more than 75 publications to the best of my knowledge in peer-reviewed journals showing the safety and efficacy of the company, uh, I think the company is uh, Redent Nova, mm -hmm. and I think it's in Tel Aviv, Israel, and uh, they have come out with this remarkable instrument, which is dramatically different than any other instrument on the market because its unique quality among several, is that it will adjust its circumferential shape to the circumferential shape of the root canal. Mm -hmm. All other instruments are round when seen in cross-section as a practical matter. And although we try every technique and from rotary and reciprocal, but nothing can match a file that is self-adjusting and can scrape the walls while irrigation is going on at the same time with sodium hypochlorite, uh, enabling uh, the canal system to be more thoroughly disinfected and shaped properly than anything else on the market. And I have to hasten to add, I have no connection in any way or form with this company. My comment is based strictly upon literature. Thank you so much. Uh, so what factors do you consider when selecting a file system? Because there are so many files available in the market. So how a young dentist can differentiate from one file to another? Uh, that's a much harder question for this reason. Because first of all, the people who are offering the files will make many claims. And one has to be, uh, there's an expression one has to view this with a somewhat jaundiced eye. In other words, when claims are made about an instrument, one has to have a little degree of suspicion. Where is the proof? We need evidence. We need peer-reviewed journals that publish the findings of cohort studies uh, to demonstrate safety and effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, at the present time, if I'm not using the self-adjusting file, then I'll use a reciprocal file. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, the only thing I would say about the self-adjusting file in North America, it's rather costly. But uh, apart from the cost, when we look at the broader picture, what serves the patient, there is no question that the SAF, in comparison to all other instruments, is clearly superior. Thank you so much. And what would be, uh, what is your current irrigation protocol? Well, I, uh, I'll use an instrument, uh, one, of the, one of the shaping uh, instruments from several different companies. I, I tried mm -hmm. them all and I'll irrigate copiously uh, with sodium hypochlorite. Uh, I usually use about half strength, but there's good literature for using full strength, but the literature for using anything less than half strength, uh, I would view with a, a degree of concern mm -hmm. because uh, when we irrigate, of course we have to irrigate drip by drip but after each instrument, we should be irrigating with at least three to five cc's of sodium hypochlorite. 
Now, for the more uh, advanced endodontic students, mm -hmm. uh, one can even warm the sodium hypochlorite to body temperature, for example, even up to uh, 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 body temperature. We use Fahrenheit here, as you know, so uh, even up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, that will help. And I might add as a postscript, warming an anesthetic before administering it is also a very helpful technique because this helps to minimize the pain patients experience when injecting mm -hmm. uh, an anesthetic that usually is at room temperature. That, that was a long answer to a short question. Yes. So what would be the effect of full strength hypochloride with uh, AD, uh, like liquid EDTA for five minutes on interradicular denting? Well, uh, and yes, uh, I do use EDTA. After the sodium hypochlorite, irrigation with EDTA is uh, quite helpful, as we know, because it will help to uh, remove the calcium from the calcium orthophosphate crystalline structure. Uh, and <clears throat> depending upon the uh, diagnosis originally, we have to visualize in our mind's eye that there are many lacunae within the pre-dentin dentin. Uh, and if we look at a scanning electron microscopic photograph, and when we get down to just a few microns, we can see that this dentin has many tiny spaces where bacteria, uh, the fungi, uh, prions, which you rarely hear about, viruses, they can all hide in these spaces. So that's why it's so critical for us to get down to all four walls, in a matter of speaking, of the entire root canal system. I'm not sure if I even answered your question. I sort of drifted off there. Yes, like the effect of the hypochlorite and EDD on interradicular. Uh, well, uh, I, I use them interchangeably. Yes. Uh, after is, uh, sodium hypochlorite, then EDTA, or uh, the brand name is RC Prep. Uh, which is a creamy solution, mm -hmm. which also contains EDTA. And depending upon the case, I may use RC Prep in lieu of EDTA alone. Okay, so will it affect any strength of the, or the hardness of the dentine, and to what extent, or? Uh, that I, I couldn't answer. I'm not sure. Uh, the intention, of course, is to soften the dentin measure the microns mm -hmm. to make it easier for the instruments to scrape it out. But I think if I could reinterpret the question, what about the residual dentin after uh, shaping has been completed? Mm -hmm. Will any part of that dentin be softened? Right. And that would be a concern and I can't answer that. I don't know. Okay. Some more research is needed maybe. <laughs> so what is your opinion about the new generation bioceramic sealers? Uh, the bioceramic sealers are outstanding. Uh, I have conducted uh, an evidence level one investigation uh, with mineral trioxide aggregate as one of uh, several cohorts, uh, endo sequence as another, and uh, biodentin as a third. And we found in our uh, investigation which uh, fortunately was conducted by the Chilean Navy. And we followed these cases uh, after we used these sealers for up to six months. And uh, this was a double blind study. We had no, and no one involved in the investigation had any interest directly or indirectly in the outcome. So in this investigation over six months, uh, we found that all three MTA and those sequence biodentin were all pretty close, but statistically, biodentin came out somewhat higher. Uh, and uh, that, that is what I'm using. Okay, thank you. My next question would be, uh, is CBCT becoming a standard of care in endodontics? Uh, uh, it's not standard of care, and ideally, it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we use CBCT, the usual thought is, well, we have to take it of the whole head, which is simply not true. In endodontics, we take a very limited 
uh, POV of just three teeth, the tooth in question and one tooth adjacent on either side. In terms of the radiation exposure, comparatively speaking, it's really quite minor. So not only is it safer than taking full jaws, of course, but it's invaluable in terms of interpreting what we see in the third dimension. Because we see the, we see the X axis, we see the Y axis, but we have to see the Z axis. It's the, the ability to see the Z axis is critical because what we see with a periapical image can sometimes not reveal what's really going on underneath. And that's where CBCT is invaluable. Will it be the standard of care? I hope in my lifetime it becomes standard of care. Okay, thank you. So my last question would be, where do you think endodontics is going in the next 10 to 15 years? What new future inventions could we expect? Well, uh, first we have to think about stem cells. Mm -hmm. uh, in a future world, I am hoping that we'll get to see that with the continued bioengineering that's going on, that they will actually be able to bioengineer, if not a new pulp, then perhaps even a new tooth with a new pulp. Uh, in effect, what we are seeing and witnessing now is science fiction is becoming science fact. And uh, I think that will be one of the more dramatic changes. Uh, the uh, incorporation of the SAF for more effective cleaning and shaping, uh, I think will become more widely uh, adopted. Uh, what has not been asked, but I need to address, is that there is no reason for any patient having endodontic treatment to ever have any pain during treatment, period. Now, how is that possible? Because we've all had experiences when we administer, for example, a, um, uh, an inferior alveolar injection, perhaps even two, mm -hmm. and the patient reports the tongue is numb, the lip is numb, and we initiate treatment, and the patient has pain because the diagnosis may be irreversible pulpitis. I like those cases for this reason. Just simply administering two tenths of a cc in the distal and the mesial of that same tooth will assure the patient will have no pain. That, that's effective for five minutes by the clock if done properly. And we can tell if it's done properly by watching the blanching of the tissue and the resistance we meet when administering it. As uh, for other things in the future, uh, I think in the foreseeable future, I still think if we cannot rebuild the pulp, which we can, uh, doctors Hargraves uh, and others have done exceptional work uh, in this uh, area. That's uh, Dr. Kenneth Hargraves, University of Texas, and one of the, uh, uh, one of the editors of my textbook. Uh, and beyond that, beyond the x-rays, profound anesthesia, uh, and cone beams being incorporated more regularly, uh, I, and stem cells, I don't see much more at this point. Anything with respect to lasers? Uh, in fact, there was a fascinating study. The uh, Dr. Rodrigo uh, Amaral, uh, in Belo Horizonte, Brazil, conducted a, a PhD thesis investigation uh, with uh, using uh, photo, uh, I, I can't think of the term right now, uh, where uh, he used uh, not a Heaney light, but there was a laser light that he used, uh, it just it's escaping me in the moment, but he introduced a laser right into right up to the apical foramen uh, or close to it and he was able with administering a certain I don't know how many joules it was but he administered a certain amount of energy through a laser light 
and got thorough disinfection of the root canal system. It's an outstanding investigation that he conducted and it will be published. And this, this is something we can look forward to reading about. So yes, lasers in one form or another uh, can be incorporated in endodontics. And I think for disinfection, that will probably be the best incorporation into endodontics. Thank you so much. And I told, I, I will ask last question, but I have one more question for you. Are you writing any new chapters in your textbooks and when should we expect your new edition? Uh, the next edition I think will come out uh, before 2020. Okay. And uh, uh, the, the editors are Dr. Uh, Kenneth Hargraves and Dr. Lewis Berman from Annapolis, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Uh, these two gentlemen have been remarkable in how they've uh, taken pathways and they've advanced it even further and the portion of pathways that is now online uh, is quite uh, uh, comprehensive because it includes video clips, uh, PowerPoints, it includes many things that ordinarily would not be available to the reader if one just had the book. So even today, if one bought the 11th edition, the uh, online expert access has uh, many photographs, videos, uh, upgrades mm -hmm. to, because after all, the book only comes out every few years. So it shows upgrades to every chapter as we learn more. Thank you so much, Dr. Gohan, for giving us your valuable time. We definitely learned a lot from his vast wisdom. Thank you so much, and we'll see you all next time. Namaste to my friends. Thank you. Please, please. Thank you. So that I can go home and that. Okay. <laughs> you liked it. Okay.